Today I'm taking this plain and worn looking old pantry door and making it over into a beautiful barn door. First, I picked up my materials at the hardware store. I grabbed some 2x2s and some 1x4s. First, I removed the hinge pins from the door and moved the door into my workspace. I got rid of the old door hinges and door knob as well. Then I filled in all of those gaps with sandable wood filler. For the large hole left by the doorknob, I used a little trick where I stuffed a bit of paper towel into the hole, then covered that with putty. I have the caulking tube through the door handle opening just as a support until the putty dries. Using the paper towel helps take up space and save on the amount of putty you'll use. The wood filler will take around half an hour to dry, so I'll start working on the rest of my door. Since the barn door is mounted higher than a normal hinged door, I need to add length to my interior door. Fortunately, two by two wood pieces happen to be the same thickness as a door. I measured and cut my two by twos and affixed them to the top and bottom of the door. Now that the top and bottom pieces are attached, my door looks like this. Time for me to start working on the decorative part of the door. Using the one by fours, I measured the length of the door and made my cuts. By the way, I made straight cuts which were quick and easy, but if you wanna get more fancy, you can miter cut your corners or add a different decorative layout of the wood on your door. I attach the wood to the door using liquid nails, being careful to move the wood into place from the outside so that I didn't get the liquid adhesive onto the surface of the door that would be visible. I love how the 1x4 covers up that old door handle space. It makes it so easy. For the horizontal pieces, I again measured and cut. Take time to make sure everything is spaced perfectly. I must admit, I saved money on this step by actually using wood from an old pallet for my three center pieces. It's a little less thick than the 1x4, but you don't even notice it since the exterior frame is all made of the same wood and it's just those three inside pieces that are slightly different. Once everything was in place, I used a nail gun to secure it all. Caulking the places where the wood abuts the other pieces at the corners helps the door look seamless, and caulking it along the inside will help give it a great finished look when you're done. I like to apply a line of caulking and then gently run over it with my finger to smooth it into place. I gave that about half hour to dry. During that time, I started working on setting up my barn door track hardware. Painting was next. As you can see, I used white because that's what I had already and it was nice and neutral for my space but the door would look amazing in another color as well. I saw a door that had this same design, but it was painted blue and it was gorgeous. Once I finished my first coat of paint, I noticed that I needed to fill in these nail holes with more caulking. That was due to me using the pallet wood. No big deal, I just filled those in and waited for them to dry. I applied a total of three coats of paint to get it the way I liked it. Standing the door up made it easier to work on the sides at this point. The putty was now dry and I used sandpaper to smooth it and also to smooth the edges of the 2 by 2s at the top and bottom of the door. I used my caulking gun again, this time to fill in the gap between the original door and the decorative pieces that were added. Once that was dry, I painted those and was really happy with how seamless it looked. I attached the barn door hardware and hung my repurposed door. I love the way this barn door looks and, since I only had to purchase the wood, and a little bit of sandable wood filler at the end, it only cost me $42 plus the hardware. If I'd had to purchase all of the materials down to the sandpaper, it would have cost around $86 plus the hardware. I purchased the hardware from Amazon and it was $50 total, including the handle. I hope this inspired you to repurpose your old interior door and make it a beautiful feature in your home. We just bought a house that needed a lot of work. There is this weird room leading from the garage into the house. It had a closet that I knew we wouldn't use, so I decided to make it into a usable space. So I removed the bifold doors and removed all the hardware on the doors. After measuring the length and width of the closet, I transferred those measurements onto the doors and cut them to size. I had to cut both ends of the doors because the way the panels were laid out on the door, I didn't want to cut a panel in half. The width of the doors were wider than my cutting range on my saw, so I just had to flip them over to continue my cut. I cut both bifold doors this way. The doors are hollow core, so I needed to make sure they were strong enough to sit on. I took the ends of the doors that I had cut off and removed the front and the back panels, so I ended up with just a solid piece of wood on the end. 
The panels were easy to remove with a chisel and a hammer. I placed the end into the door and nailed it into place. Then I filled the gaps with wood filler for a cleaner look. After all the gaps and the wood filler had dried, I sanded everything smooth, including the door. Next, I primed and painted the door white. It took one coat of primer and two coats of interior paint. Now to cut the frame for the bench. I used two by fours cut to size. I cut six 14 inch pieces for the sides, four 59 inch pieces for the top and bottom, and six 13 and a half inch pieces for the cross pieces. I used a Craig jig to drill the holes into the ends for a stronger joint. If you don't have a Craig jig, you could just screw them together at an angle, but they won't be near as strong. After I cut all the pieces, I laid the bottom of the bench out onto the bottom of the closet and screwed the pieces into place. Then the side or vertical pieces were next, which I screwed into the bottom of the frame. The top of the bench was built just like the bottom and assembled outside the closet. Once it was together, I placed it on the vertical pieces and screwed them into place. Now I had a nice solid frame. With the bifold doors cut to size, I used one for the front of the bench, sliding it into place. I had to use a rubber mallet because it, it was a little tight. I laid the other door on top, making sure it was nice and square. The doors were not as wide as the closet, so I measured the distance between the wall and the door and cut a one by four to size. I also cut thin pieces for each edge of the door of the bench. This was to ensure that when you lifted the bench lid up, you wouldn't scrape the sides of the wall. I painted those boards to match, laying the door and the one by four into place. I screwed the one by four into the frame. I filled the holes with wood putty, and then I screwed on the hinge. The bench was complete. After a fresh coat of paint on the walls, a new shelf, and some antique finds, the room was now functional space that we use every day. The extra storage we now have is great for all of our beach gear and outdoor items. I hope this inspires you to transform an unused area in your home into something amazing.